Hello everybody. <laughs> it is Sunday the 14th of March. The readathon started yesterday. I have not read anything. That's because I have two midterms tomorrow so I've just been studying for that since Thursday, Friday. Like it's, it's insane. Like I am struggling at the moment. <laughs> if you didn't tell like, and probably no one even cares, but I have not been active on any social media platform in the past like four days because of this um so everyone's i see everyone's mentioning me and tagging me and posts on instagram about this readathon and i want to look at it so bad but if i look at it i will go in a deep hole and look at everybody's and then i won't study or it'll take out of my studying time and i am not a fan of exams <laughs> um i'm not good at test taking I'm not. I have A's in my classes and I do well in my classes, but exams, tests, specifically standardized tests, don't work with me. I don't know why. Like, I try, I study. I study so hard for these tests and I understand what's going on in class. And like, I like learn, I, do, I pay attention in class. I learn everything as possible, but I'm a horrible test taker. I am horrible. So I have to dedicate more time than normal than other normal people to like study for exams. Tomorrow I have my young adult literature exam at 9.20 in the morning. Um, so I studied for that for the first part of the day until I had a meeting at 3.30. That one's gonna be interesting. I mean, I, that's the class where like, I pay attention to everything she says and I understand what she's saying and I really enjoyed the books and I've read all the materials and I think I know what's gonna be in the exam and I feel like I'm, I'm good. I feel like I could do well, possibly. I don't want to jinx myself because I do that often. Um, but the exam that I am struggling for, going to be struggling on, is my um, Eastern European exam. <laughs> it's like Eastern European from like, it's, sorry, it's like Eastern Europe from like 18, not so, I'm so sorry, that's way off from the like 500, 500 BC, no, CE, I'm sorry, CE to, the end of world war one and that's a lot of material y'all that's a lot of material in a country in an area of the world that i don't know all that much about i'm not a history major um and the majority of this class are history majors so i spent the past couple days making these flashcards these are all for the exam <laughs> so what i'm doing right now is i'm just going through and reading them and trying to memorize them i've gone through this much so far since my meeting ended at like 4.30, splitting them up into groups of 10. So I'm on this group of 10 right here. And then these are the ones I still have to get through before. I wanna do it before dinner, but I don't think that can happen because it's 6.15 and I like to eat dinner at like seven. It just has weird names. Like, look at this. Who, who could even pronounce that name? Like, it just, it's a lot of stuff and I'm not looking forward to this. Um, luckily after my, YA literature class. I don't have my Eastern European exam until 135. So I have all that time to study for this. Also, while I've been studying, I've been playing. Oh, also you see those papers on the mirror back there? That's a timeline I made for my Eastern European class. <laughs> I just put it on my mirror to stare at it for a couple days. So I play this while I study, if you can even see it. It's um, a four Five at almost five hour long video where it's just the piano someone playing piano for every single Disney song <laughs> and it goes on for almost five hours and I love listening to that um, I'll link it down below if anybody wants to listen to it while they study because I cannot study in silence I am praying and hoping that I do well and if I don't I have to remember it's not the end of the world I don't need a 4.0 I'm not going to grad school <laughs> so I gotta just try to fix my perfect achieving brain <laughs> that it's okay not to get A's. It's okay not to get A's. That's all I've been doing. I don't have a reading update because I've been stressing out about this test. Hello there everybody. It is Tuesday. Um, it's been a little bit since I've updated you. Um, I took both of my exams yesterday and I have one more exam to take later this week but it's online and I can take it whenever I want so a lot of stress has been decreased. <laughs> I don't know how I did on them. We will see. I have finished a book and started another one. So right when I got done with my exam I came home 
and read a complete novella because <laughs> I wanted to. I wanted to read a book because I hadn't, at that point I had not read or listened to a book in um, like five days, which is not my thing. <laughs> I always like to be reading something. Actually, I started two books because I also started an audiobook. On my way back from the test, I ended up starting Sweet Filthy Boy by Christina Lauren, and I only ended up reading the first chapter or listening to the first chapter. The reason why I'm listening to this is because I got the um, ebook for my birthday, I believe, from Brie from 11 Words, so I've had it for a couple of months, and so the audiobook was in Libby for me, so I decided to listen to the audiobook. I know nothing about this book. I think it's a one night stand to more romance and um, it's in Vegas. And I think our hero was French, if I'm not mistaken. They only like just met and that's how the chapter ended is them meeting. Um, so far I'm really intrigued. I love Christina Lauren and I wanna know if this series is more like Beautiful Bastard or like their newer stuff when it comes to Steam Factor. And then I also started, oh, I forgot to even tell you what I finished. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't vlogged for a while. <laughs> The last time I vlogged was Snowpocalypse, and that was crazy. So I finished Queen Sized by Jessica Kane. That's the one that I ended up completing, starting and finishing yesterday after I got back from class, and it's only like 80 something pages. I had it checked out on Kindle Unlimited. And I'm trying to read as many Kindle Unlimited books as possible because I am canceling my subscription service just because I don't, I'm not keeping a bunch of subscription services. I'm canceling a bunch of them, so I need to listen or read all of those Kindle Unlimited books. And so that was one that I wanted to read. I was on Kindle Unlimited. If you would have watched my February wrap up, I absolutely loved and adored King Sized by her, which was a bodyguard romance where the heroine is a queen. And I loved that book so much. Um, this one is about a king and he doesn't want a wife he's never wanted a wife because of the abuse that he's faced when he was a kid but then he's like i'll never find a wife i'll never never marry and then he comes across our heroine and he is infatuated with her and um she's a curvy heroine she's a plus size heroine and i'm pretty sure he's pretty big too like he it doesn't really say all he says is that like she she was always scared of like guys not wanting to be with her because they're smaller than her or something and he's like um are you kidding me? I am ginormous. I guess he's maybe just a big burly man. I don't know. I didn't really like describe that all that much. Oh, sorry. I love her like books in this like series. It's not a series. Like you don't need to read them. They're all standalones. But I just love them so much. This one I'm leaning more towards a 3.5 or a 4. I'm not sure yet. I'll figure out by the end of the the week just because it, it's not as good as the uh, king sized one just our hero was really stubborn and not seeing our heroine's worth in certain things and that got on my nerves also if you see my room and it's really messy behind me i am incredibly sorry <laughs> i need to clean it up <laughs> that's what i'm going to be doing later today that's what i'm going to be uh doing later today hopefully by listening to the audiobook or watching a tv show so i recently rewatched the vampire diaries and then i rewatched the originals and i'm watching legacies for the first time and i'm kind of hooked even though people they don't like this show i'm kind of hooked it reminds me of charmed <laughs> a little bit um with like a new villain coming in every show and everything and then this morning oh my gosh i'm so sorry i am exhausted uh, even though i slept a whole bunch last night I even took a nap after I finished Queen Size. I literally like slept for two hours from six at night to eight at night. And I got up, had dinner, did some homework and fell asleep again. <laughs> it, I'm, I've been exhausted. So this morning I ended up starting Barbarian's Bride. I think that's the title by Ruby Dixon. This is her newest Ice Planet Barbarian, not Ice Home. I think my TBR said Ice Home. It's Ice Planet Barbarian book. Um, and this is also on Kindle Unlimited and I wanted to read this because my girl Ruby Dixon is on Kindle Unlimited and I can't read her stuff anymore. Like if I don't have Kindle Unlimited, which stinks, I'm gonna have to wait until I have saved enough, up enough money to get KU again um, to read more of Ruby Dixon's backlist because that was a goal of mine for 2021 was to read more of a backlist. Um, but anyway, so this is a story of Nora and she's one of the first women to um, crash land on this planet. And you get to like go back in time and see how she fell in love with her mate and everything. 
Um, we had a little, little novella about her. It's the probably one of the worst covers in the series, the one with two blue babies on the cover. <laughs> yeah, that one's a little novella about her, like, um, giving birth to her twin girls. I've been loving the flashback books. I know other people haven't been. I like them. I just love anything in this world, in all honesty. <laughs> um, so I'm on like page like 15, and I'm gonna be reading a bunch of that throughout the day today. We'll see if I finish it by the end of the day. I think it's only 180 something pages if I'm not mistaken. Okay, I just ended up finishing Barbarian's Bride by Ruby Dixon. Oh my goodness. This is the last full length novel, a part of the Ice Planet Barbarian series. I forgot about that before I started it. This is the last full length one. We will not get a full length one, a part of the series again, which is so sad. We're either going to be getting a novella, possibly going back to like the prequel parts, like the beginning of the series, um, and then you're gonna have spin-offs in the Ice Home series, which I love the Ice Home series. It's not better than Ice Planet Barbarians in my opinion. <laughs> I just love it so much. But something, like some of the authors note at the end, her talking about how she said that this is the last like full-length book, a part of this series, and she was like, I've gotten a lot of questions about the prequels and Ice Home and the spin-off series, and she was like, people have asked me to write about like all of the characters in this series, and they're like, children like in the future and I want that oh my gosh like all of their kids that are running around I would love that or she says some people even asked her to like write about a new group of people crash landing on this planet again which I don't know because she already did that with Ice Home you know so I'm not sure about that maybe a whole different series you know maybe a whole different series and a whole different planet that might be cool anyway I'm ranting about this amazing series that I'm obsessed with man this was fun this was just like a prequel going back to one of the couples is telling their story of how they first became mates and fell in love whenever she first crash landed onto this ice planet and everything and I really liked it because it has like some light BDSM stuff in there and it really like our heroine likes that kind of stuff and she has to like explain it to an alien who like they worship women and they would never hurt a woman in their entire life like they think it's repulsive to hurt women and like she has to explain to him like what it all is and how it's not actually hurting her and it's very interesting um i really liked how ruby dixon took this book i really liked it i'm gonna give it four stars i really enjoyed it had a really fun time reading it i was just a little bit um frustrated with the lack of communication at the beginning part of it but I also feel like that could be very organic because sometimes it's something that people aren't really comfortable talking about you know I don't know I don't know let me know if you've read it what you thought about it I really liked it um so yeah, I'm gonna give that one four stars so that book is a four and I definitely like this book more than queen size so I think I'm gonna give queen size a 3.5 now that I think about it I think that's what I'm gonna do so I think that might happen um but I'm going to uh go hang out with my sister's puppy um and go maybe do some homework and maybe pick out another book so i'm gonna go do that hi everybody it is thursday night and i thought i would chat with y'all while doing my <laughs> hair for the night i took a shower earlier so i'm gonna make some french braids to sleep in so that it'll look nice tomorrow so we're gonna do that while we chat i don't think i talked to y'all on Tuesday or Wednesday, so I haven't talked to you in two days, and that's Honest truth. I forgot <laughs> um, My brain I guess like I'm gonna talk about this in a little bit, but my brain has been really um, Scatterbrained and anxiety ridden and so um, I haven't been focusing on vlogging if that makes sense So I'm sorry if there's not a lot of content in here because I think that every readathon ends tomorrow. I have a few updates. I've read some books. So I believe the last thing I updated you on was Barbarian's Bride by Ruby Dixon. I think I talked about how I, I finished it. Like I, I read the whole thing. I'm pretty sure hopefully I talked about that. I don't remember honestly. And so then I decided to pick up a book that was on my TBR. I had four books on my TBR that I for sure wanted to get to for this readathon. And that was, what's it called? It's called Claiming Cinderella by Lauren Milson. This was just a book I had checked out on Kindle Unlimited. I'm trying to read books on my Kindle Unlimited until my subscription service ends. So I picked this one up and this one is like taglined as an age gap romance it's 40 something pages 
Valentine's-esque, Cinderella-esque. So I picked it up and I DNF'd it 10 pages in or maybe even less. It's just like the writing style is not for me. This book needed to be edited so badly. There were a bunch of run-on sentences and that's a huge pet peeve of mine in reading. I can't stand run-on sentences <laughs> and I can tell when a book's not edited enough. Even if it's a 44 page novella, if that makes sense. Um, so was not vibing it, did not want to waste my time, and so I DNF'd it. Then I decided to pick up, what's the next book I picked up? I picked up Indulging Her by Leah Ellen. This is another short book, I think like 80 something pages. This one is a female female romance. And I was really excited for that. I really wanted to read a female female romance. Um, just more LGBTQ romances. So this book is pitched as like um, a woman who owns a bakery falling for a woman who is a billionaire. And that kind of is what it is, but it also isn't. I'll just like read my review. How about I read my review? Because I feel like my review sums this up very much. I know I didn't talk about the summary all that much, but that's like basically what the summary gave you is that it's a romance between a woman who owns a bakery and then a billionaire she meets. I gave this book 2.5 out of 5 stars. I said, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little let down with this one. I thought that this was going to be a hot female female romance between the owner of a bakery and the billionaire she meets. It kind of was that, but not really. I do not feel any romance between the two women. I know this is an Insta story, but I know that Insta lust stories should have an authentic romantic element in them. The characters met and they already decided they were together. There was no talk about it, which frustrates me. <laughs> I was also let down when it came to the steam factor. I wanted way more than I got. Barely anything happened at all. This focused more on the heroine and her bakery, not the romance between the two women. I just wanted more. So I felt like that really summed up my thoughts on it. I was not feeling it because the story, mo the majority of the story is about our heroine who owns the bakery and her struggling to keep this bakery afloat, not the romance between the two women. And again, a pet peeve of mine is when characters don't like talk about their relationship or just like characters just jump on in without even like addressing that they're together, what they get together. It's like, why, <laughs> why? Um, so that was a big pet peeve of mine. I found it like really, I really liked the bakery aspect of it and everything, but it just, it was not enough. <laughs> it was not enough. So then I ended up finishing today, um, Sweet Filthy Boy by Christina Lauren on audio. And again, this is like a one night stand to more romance in Vegas. Our two characters meet one night in Vegas. They see each other from across a club and they each like, notice that they're really attractive um but like they don't go up to each other like i think she shortly leaves and he can't find her until later that night um our heroine and her two friends are in their hotel room and our heroine can't fall asleep because the neighbors in the room next door to her are being super loud and so she goes to knock on their door and out walks the guy who caught her attention at the club she was at and he's french they see each other at another club um, the next night, the morning after that, all all six people, because he brought, he had his two guy friends. And so each person hooks up with somebody in the friend group and all of them are married. <laughs> they can't remember it. She had a drunk wedding, like she was wasted. Oh, this is gonna bug me. There's a bump in here. Ugh, darn it. <laughs> yeah, they get like married while they're drunk and they wake up and they're like what the heck happened our heroine is so intrigued by our hero that she's like i don't think i want to get annulled just yet um and she may or may not decide to take a spontaneous summer vacation in france to go be with him and like get to know him and everything this was super fun i really liked it the narrators were really great i really liked their romance and how authentic our authors made it to them like meeting across the room and they can't like find each other to awkward steamy times between two people i thought that was really fun to read about and i really liked how authentic our characters were if that makes sense the only like issue that i have is the conflict that's where a lot of my issues come from with romance books i don't like um if i don't like the conflict that's an issue for me <laughs> like nobody likes conflict in romance but if the conflict like doesn't make sense and then today i started another audiobook after 
We finished Sweet Filthy Boy. I started um, Brooklyn Air by Serena Bowen and I think I'm only like either two hours or only an hour and a half of the way through that one. So this is a romance between um, a billionaire and his assistant who he's also like been really close with for years and I think he's been like crushing on her for years as well. Okay, one braid. Oh, I hate that. I'm just gonna tie it in at the bottom. Um, <laughs> so I got one braid down. There we go. That's good. Off to the next one. And he's really cute. He's like socially awkward. He owns um, the Brooklyn Bruisers, which is another series by Serena Bowen that I've read the first book of um, and I really liked it. It's a hockey series. This audiobook is really interesting because there's three narrators, even though there's only two characters, but there's a third narrator because there's some chapters that are told in third person when the ones with the hero and heroine are first person so I find that very interesting and writing style because I don't think that's what happened in Brooklyn Bruisers I'm like the first book in that series but I'm really liking that I really like the narrators so far um, I'm gonna listen to some of that tonight before bed I hope to start tomorrow um, the initiation by Nikki Sloan and that will hopefully knock off all four books I had on my TBR um, I didn't finish claiming Cinderella. I DNF'd it, so oh well. I'm not gonna pick that one back up. <laughs> but that one I know like absolutely like nothing about except like a woman goes into a boardroom and apparently some scandalous things happen in the boardroom. I've been told to go as blind as possible into that one. Um, so that's what I'm planning on doing. I'm currently at my parents' house. My sister ended up driving me to my parents' house um, because I'm having car troubles yet again. <laughs> It died on me while I was driving again, so I'm just done with that car. <laughs> um, so she very kindly dropped me off here, and so I'm staying the weekend with them. Today's Thursday, and so I normally have Friday classes, but my university is being dumb. They don't want us going out and doing things for spring break and then possibly bringing back COVID to school, which I understand, but no other university is doing this. Everyone else has a week of spring break. My school does not. We have one Friday. That is tomorrow. That's our spring break. All the universities get to have a whole week off and we do not, which is quite sad. But yeah, I'm going to be spending the weekend here with my parents. Um, they live on like a property like with um, a wood, wooded area, which is pretty cool, but it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. So I know that there's a live show for this readathon on the 20th for on Jen's channel, um, but I can't, cannot be a part of it because last time I was in a live show is the uh, sick chick, sick chicks chat. That's a tongue twister for me. Sick chicks chat. There we go. On um, Brie from In Love and Words, her channel, um, where we talked about uh, chronic illnesses. Um, those in the bookish community who have chronic illnesses. Um, I kept going in and out. I didn't know how bad my parents' Wi Fi was then. So I vowed never again to use, uh, to do a live show at my parents' house because the internet is horrible here. So I told Jen that I. Unfortunately, cannot participate because um, I I don't have <laughs> service to do it. Um, by the way, today's Jen's birthday, which is really amazing. Um, if you have not yet, go wish her a happy birthday. Today's her birthday, and I love her oh so very much. <laughs> I don't know. I think the readathon ends tomorrow, right? The nineteenth. I'm a really bad. <laughs> at remembering things. I have a horrible memory. I love like when people ask me to host readathons. It's really nice, but I forgot how drained I was when I hosted the last Kindle Clear Out because I think like that was the last readathon I helped co-host, I'm pretty sure. And I think I even talked in that vlog how readathons maybe aren't the best thing for me. <laughs> I realize that now and like I think I need to take that into account next time. I like am asked to do a readathon um because I love readathon so much and I'm so thankful that um Jen asked me to be a part of this one because I love this readathon so much like Brie is amazing and she created it and everything I think it's just Instagram specifically maybe I need to get rid of an, my Instagram while um I co-host something you know because like I love that people mention me in their like insta stories like I love it I love being looking at everybody's posts and everything but um my anxiety gets the best of me, if that makes sense. My social anxiety gets super bad to where like, I'll have 
like I have like 20 something messages in my Instagram request messages and I'm not looking at any of them <laughs> which is sad it just it makes me want to delete the app like I can't I can't stand that much attention if that makes sense um I don't really know how to describe it my brain's just like don't go on Instagram you have so many messages from people you don't know and I love those people. I love y'all so much and I'm so thankful and glad that you tagged me and stuff. It's amazing. I feel like it overwhelms me if that makes sense um, and I feel like that might happen for some people. I don't mean that in a bad way whatsoever. I absolutely love that y'all tag me in things and I don't want y'all to feel sorry for tagging me in things ever um, because I love that y'all think of me and tagging things that have me in them. I think I get overwhelmed with how with, in readathons how many people do it at once. That's my thing. It's how everybody does it at one time my brain doesn't know what to do i don't know what to do they're just sitting there and um yeah also this whole past week has not been a great mental health week for me my anxiety has been pretty bad um and that's probably all to do or caused from my midterms that i took i spent days studying for the two midterms that i had on Monday like days I got one of my midterm grades back today and it's not the best thing I've ever done but you know what it is what it is but my anxiety is so haywire I'm having a really big problem with my skin picking issue of my cuticles um, my uh, if you can see here my thumb is ripped raw yeah when I'm anxious I do that which is gross I know um but that is on most of my fingers right now and I subconsciously do it I don't realize that I'm doing it and it's really hard to get me to stop and also I've been breaking out <laughs> which is not fun um which is also another side effect for my anxiety but then um uh, today was a bad day for me when it comes to my anxiety just like I feel like my the tests and everything leading up to it just put me like put, put my anxiety on a haywire which also it probably didn't I don't I don't know it just it hasn't been that great of a, a week for me when it comes to it I think like everything mixed together with the attention on social media my exams and trying to think about exams I are things I cannot control which is a huge issue for me if I can't control something it it makes my brain go haywire um, and makes me super anxious my anxiety can be really crippling at times which is not fun one of my side effects for my anxiety that I've had ever since I was little is to cry which I hate to crying in front of people it is embarrassing one of the most embarrassing things ever for me a lot of the times it happens with people um like in social situations like it's always no it's always somebody in social situations with me what am I saying I have social anxiety and when people meet me at first they're like how do you have social anxiety number one I babble like freaking crazy like that that's something that people with social anxiety do if you, or high functioning anxiety in general I just babble because I don't know what to say so I just word vomit all the time <laughs> and so that's what happened today another like thing that I'll get into that in a second but like another thing that I do or something that triggers me for some reason is people of authority like people of authority make me sob for specific reasons not everybody of authority makes me sob it's bad for like professors and administrators and police officers and just like anyone of authority of me it's not great because when people think like oh you're gonna be a teacher you're gonna be talking to kids like kids i'm fine with kids i can talk all day long with not be sad not be anxious not be tearful like my anxiety won't be sparked at all i love kids so stinking much but I am petrified to become a teacher because I will have to talk to parents. Parents could be an authority figure to me. They're probably gonna be older than me and just like, I already know that I'm gonna deal with yelling parents in my life, like as a teacher. And it's just gonna not be great because it's not fun to have your child's teacher cry in front of you for no reason. I do it for no reason. My body just reacts that way. It gets super anxious and um, yeah, so basically today I got my exam back, my grade for it for my 
Eastern European one. It got curved, which thank goodness it did. If it didn't get curved, I would not have a C. I got a C in it, which probably the second worst grade I've ever had in a college exam, um, which isn't that bad. And this, this class is pretty freaking hard. So I was kind of like proud of myself. I'm not sad. I was not sad about me getting a 75. I was not. My um, friend who's also in the education department, because it's a class full of history majors, um, she also got like a high grade and I was like oh my gosh that's amazing and I look at mine I'm like I'm just not that good at history history is just not my strong suit because I've always said that it's not really it takes me way it, it's way harder for me to understand history than any English class you know most of the students were gone at this point because you had to go up to the classroom to get your exam from a table um and most I think like only like three people were left in the room um, and then the professor. So the professor overheard me. And this professor is really nice. He's really chill. He's really funny. I like him as a person. My body, however, <laughs> decided to be super anxious today um, or in general. So he overhears me and he's like, well, what do you mean? History's not your strong suit. And I was like, it's, I, were, first of all, when I was saying history is not my strong suit, I was somewhat being truthful, but also babbling because like I was in shock of my grade. I honestly thought I was gonna get a B at least. Um, so again, I was really anxious and I started babbling. Oh, history is not my thing and talking really fast and just, and he overhears me and he's like, well, what do you mean by that? Like, what do you mean history is not your thing? And I was like, yeah, I'm not, I, I just didn't really get that great of a, like as good as I, great as I wanted to. Like she obviously did better than me. She's been studying for a very long time and this was the only test that she had. And I had another exam earlier that day that I was studying for, I had two exams in one day. And he's like, oh, well then that, that's a different thing. That doesn't mean you're not good at history. And I'm like, well, yeah, of course, but like there's so many different factors in it and everything. And my body just decided to tear up. And um, I tried like turning away from him and he was still talking, which I hate doing to people. I hate not looking people in the eye or actually like facing them when they're talking to me. I had to turn around and like pretend I was putting something away while he was talking so that he couldn't see me like holding back tears and I was just trying to get out of there as fast as possible. I walk out of there with my friend and I just like burst into tears and I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm fine with my grade. It's fine. My body just reacts this way and it is so embarrassing. I'm in a public freaking place on campus. It just, my body just isn't, isn't, isn't for that. I've realized something today though about this. I don't know why it didn't even click in my brain that this is the reason why, but I was talking to my mom afterward. I know this is very long winded. I'm talking for a very long time, but I really wanted to talk <laughs> about this, but um, cause I know that some people struggle with anxiety as well. And I feel like I don't have any content in this vlog at all. So might as well just say something that's on my mind. I was talking to my mom after it and like crying and I'm like, I hate how my body does this. I don't know why I don't want to cry. My body just immediately does it. And like, I've been working, I've been working so hard at like putting myself out there more, like never in a million years, two years ago, at the beginning of my college career, in high school, would I have raised my hand in class to ask a question? Literally before I got my exam back, we had lecture and I asked a question during lecture and I was perfectly fine. I was chill. I was perfectly good. And I was like telling my mom, I was like, what is the deal? I was perfectly fine. I, whenever I asked him a question in front of everybody, like what the heck? I hate how my body does this. I hate it. And she's like, it's because you didn't prepare yourself. It's because he came and talked to you spontaneously. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Because my old therapist, um, which I need to find a new therapist. Long story short, I told her about how I'm having like skin picking issues and she was basically like, oh yeah, that's a form of like OCD. You can like put on gloves or go see a psychiatrist. And that was like, or two options for me. Anyway, anyway, um, <laughs> gonna get over that. I remember in therapy how, like something that we talked about this also, how back when I was in therapy, specifically in my transition between two, my two universities that I've been at, um, I was having a really hard time. I've always had a really hard time, <laughs> but specifically that was a really bad time. And um, I was talking to her about my, like how I get really tearful, how I'd get tearful um, when I get really anxious and her advice for me was to mentally prepare myself before doing or saying certain things and that will hopefully lessen my anxiety and I think I've like wired my brain to subconsciously do it from now on for certain things 
like um, if I ask a, ask a question in class, but it's a good couple minutes, I come up with my question and it'll be minutes later before I have actually ask it because I'm preparing myself. I've realized that now. <laughs> like today in class, I was like, what is like after class, after I was done crying and all that crap, I was like, what is the difference between me asking that question and me like talking to the professor at the end of class? And my mom basically opened up my eyes and made me realize something I didn't even realize and she did. And she's like, it's because like, you didn't have time to prepare to talk to him. Like you weren't expecting to talk to him. And that is 100% right. <laughs> I was not able to mentally prepare myself to talk to him like at all. And I need to do that literally with anybody that I talk to most of the time. If it's not my best friend or my close friends or my family, if I do not mentally prepare myself to talk to somebody, even like check out people at the grocery store. I know that people are being super friendly and everything. And I'm just a super anxious person. And I have to prepare myself while I'm waiting in line. I'm like, okay, if they talk to you, what are you going to say? This is what you're going to do and everything. And I've realized that but I actually, I do that subconsciously now. And so whenever people talk to me spur of the moment, I, I babble a lot or, or, and, and, or I get really tearful because I was not able to prepare myself to talk to somebody which is a great realization for me because I didn't even realize that my mom, I started like crying even more. I was like, mom, you just like put into words what my body is doing and I didn't even realize it. <laughs> you know, today was a bad day, but also today was a good day and me realizing something about myself, you know, and hopefully that will help me in the future. But I don't really know how I'm trying to realize that or trying to understand it better, if that makes sense. Anyway, I'm going on like a tangent right now and I'm really sorry, but I feel like people are experiencing the same thing. I think so. And I'm very open about my mental health on my channel. If it's not your thing to listen to, that's okay too. I get it. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm going to go um, climb into bed with all my puppies. I get to cuddle with puppies tonight. I'm so excited. Um, and listen to some of my book before I fall asleep. I'll chat with you tomorrow. Hello everybody, it's the next day. Um, also, I know the room looks purple. My mom has indoor um, like seedlings she's growing um, inside this apartment and so she's using like purple lights to give them light. <laughs> So it reflects and everything. So I'm giving you a reading update. I know today's the last day of the readathon, but I kind of want to bring it up to Sunday, maybe like extend it for myself because I didn't really get to read for the first couple days of the readathon. So I'm going to continue for the next couple days. I hope that's okay for y'all. So I am in the middle of two books currently. I'm in the middle of Brooklyn Air, Brooklyn Air by Serena Bowen. Um, and I'm like, 35% of the way through that one and I'm really enjoying it so far. Our hero is hardcore crushing on a heroine and her heroine has no idea and I think she's possibly gonna realize soon that she likes him too. I don't know, we'll see. And then um, I also started The Initiation by Nikki Sloan. I'm like on like the first chapter or second chapter and our hero just walked in on our heroine in the library. Um, I'm in like that scene and they're like kissing. I'm expecting somebody to walk in on them, specifically her sister, because this is like I don't even know if I talked about the initiation, but I talked about it in my TBR video how I, I barely knew anything about this book, but basically our hero is like the son of this like big prestigious CEO dude and um, or this rich guy. He has like always been promised to our heroine's like sister. Like that's, it's kind of like an arranged situation where like their parents want them to get together if that makes sense. And our heroine has always thought that this guy has hated her and he is the reason she had no friends in school or ever got attention from guys. And he walks in on her in the library during one of his parties. He wants her apparently instead of her sister. So that's why I am so far. That's all I know so far. I heard it gets pretty wild. And so I want to read a little bit tonight. It's like 1030 right now. Um, but I'm gonna read a little bit before bed, but I'm probably gonna fall asleep very soon. But I wanted to give you a little haul um, because I went on a little shopping trip with my mom. There's like some outdoor markets um, near her our parent my parents house <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna show you what I got so I found I don't know if I can put it on the frame but I found this very cute dress hopefully you can like picture it it's so cute here so cute very me I love dresses like these very cute and then these are all books but they're all children's books. <laughs> I love children's books a lot. I collect certain kinds of children's books what you'll see in a second and then um, I am always finding cheap and expensive, amazing books to add to my future classroom whenever I become a teacher. I still don't know what grade I want to teach, so I'm collecting a little bit of everything, children's books and middle grade and everything. Um, so I ended up finding this book for $2. Um, 
if you give a moose a muffin um i loved this book as a kid as well as like if you give a mouse a cookie um so i found this for two dollars which is probably way more at a bookstore and so my family and i well specifically me and my mom i don't know where my mom put them all because we moved and everything or they moved uh, but we collect the golden books because i grew up reading these constantly they're my favorite things ever these little golden books so i just bought a bunch like at one of the booths at this little like market day thing um they had like five buckets of these and i went through and i obviously couldn't buy all of them even though i wanted to um but i specifically wanted to find all the disney ones like disney princesses disney movie ones because those are the ones i have top priority for because i love them and i want to collect them so i'm gonna walk you through the ones that i got we have pocahontas next is pinocchio by the way i have to take the stickers off for some of them but these are really old like a bunch of them were made in the um 80s the 90s um most of them were made in the 80s and 90s um here we have 101 dalmatians then we have this is the oldest one i think this was made in the 50s alice in wonderland then we have the little mermaid ariel's underwater adventure then we have snow white and the seven dwarves we have just little mermaid in general and then i have beauty and the beast we have aladdin i love this cover it's sleeping beauty i love it my mom told me to get this one because she wants me to watch the movie and she says I watched this movie as a kid, but I don't remember Mrs. Brigsby and the Magic Stone. I don't remember this Disney movie, but I bet it's on Disney Plus and she wants me to watch it. Um, and lastly, of course, we have The Lion King. So um, I collect these and I am so excited. Like the back of this book brings me so much nostalgia. I would just stare at the back of this book. Like, cause the back is the same for all the books, except some of them are in different color, but like the um, like the characters on the backs of them are all the same, but I love little golden books. And whenever I come across them for like a, a cheap price, I think altogether all of these were $20. Cause you, if there's a deal, for, you get three for five bucks. I'm very excited to add these to my collection. I need to go find more of them. Cause I love little golden books. Um, I obviously want to find Disney ones, but I want to find like all in general. My priority is Disney ones though. But yeah, that's my little haul. That's what I got today. Yeah, I'm gonna go get ready for bed, climb into bed, go snuggle with my dog. I'm so excited. I love cuddling with my dogs and I missed it. I missed it so much. I'm so happy I'm hanging out with them. <laughs> so I'm gonna go read some more and I'll update you tomorrow. I just finished the initiation. Wow. <laughs> whoa like i kind of expected what the initiation itself was gonna be but the end of that book oh my word are you kidding me that was insane i kind of want to read the next books but i heard or i've read reviews that the ending of the third one really disappointed people if you read this whole series let me know your thoughts about it because the end of that book was messed up and like i want to know what happens but i don't know if i want to read two more books and then be let down at the end let me know let me know but i think i'm just gonna give it four stars it was highly entertaining um kept me on the edge of my seat i was i was hooked i was hooked and it was just bizarre this book is honestly just bizarre and insane and like what <laughs> so again if I want y'all to tell me if it's worth it to read the rest of the series because I was highly entertained by this book but I don't want to be disappointed with the other ones you know. Today I've just been like chilling and hanging out with my family. Today I filmed a read with me video which will hopefully be out soon I don't know when. You, you should probably just go read with me in the woods. <laughs> That's what the whole video is you get to put it on in the background um, of you reading so we can read together <laughs> and um I'm actually reading this book while, uh, like reading the initiation while, um, filming my read with me video. Um, and so yeah, you're gonna have forest ambiance sounds because <laughs> my parents' property, um, has like a forest in it. And so I just filmed in that for a little bit. Um, I had to cut some of it short because there's like a air airport or air something um where pilots train kind of like nearby and so you hear planes a lot so i had to cut out at least half of the footage because i just kept hearing planes and y'all probably didn't want to hear that <laughs> um so it's shorter than i would have liked but it is what it is i have not gotten any farther with brooklyn air and i will hopefully be finishing it tonight if not tomorrow um i have other things to do and um i have to do some assignments i did it i completed i took a test today um and i think i did pretty well on it and so i'm looking forward to seeing that grade i think i did good i think i did good um not like that other test that 
I gotta see on, but you know what? It's okay, it's okay. So I'm going to go make some dinner. My mom loves when I make cheddar broccoli rice, it's her favorite, and I love making it, so I'm gonna go make it, and I will uh, chat with y'all later. Hello, um, sorry for the poor quality. I'm currently filming on my um, laptop right now because I am too tired to get like my phone out and start filming on my phone. Um, also, yes, that's Samantha behind me talking about kombucha. <laughs> I'm currently watching her video. Um, I like to watch YouTube videos while I edit and I understand everything that's going on. Um, but yeah, she was the latest video that I've been watching while I've been editing my video. And I realized that I never um, wrapped up the vlog. <laughs> um, it's actually uh, Monday, a couple days after the readathon has ended. And I actually finished Brooklyn, blur, blur, I cannot talk. I actually finished Brooklyn Air today. And so uh, I didn't get to complete all my books by Sunday, but you know what? I still completed the four books that I had on my TBR. Might have not, might have not been all in one week, but it still happened. So <laughs> pat on my back for that. Um, I thought I would tell you, I'm pulling this up, tell you all of the books that I ended up completing during this readathon. Fast and Simple, I read Queen Sized by Jessica Kane, and I believe I gave that one 3.5 out of 5 stars. I DNF'd Claiming Cinderella by Lauren Milson, did not like that book. Um, I gave 4 stars to Barbarian's Bride by Ruby Dixon. Um, I also gave four stars to Sweet Fully Boy by Christina Lauren. And then I ended up giving, I think it's 2.5 or two stars, I don't remember, to Indulging Her by Lee Ellen. I also gave uh, four stars to The Initiation by Nikki Sloan. And then I think I'm gonna give Brooklyn Air, I think a 4.5 out of five stars. I really enjoyed that one. Um, it just, it's not my favorite romance in the entire world. So I wasn't planning on giving it a five star, but I feel like it's better than a four star, if that makes sense. I think I liked it most out of all of the books. Um, I just loved um, how charming and quirky our hero was. I love quirky heroes. I love nerdy and just like down to earth caring heroes. I love those heroes so much. <laughs> I just wish our heroine would have like got with the program sooner because like she should have. He's good looking. <laughs> so yes, overall I'm gonna give that book a 4.5 out of 5 stars. So in total I ended up reading one, two, three, four, five, six books and I DNF'd one of them, which is more than I had anticipated me reading during my very hectic and anxious written week. <laughs> I just wanted to reiterate because I'm, I'm currently in this video, so I just like s heard what I was speaking about, be babbling and everything. Don't feel like I don't care when y'all like tag me and stuff or I don't like it when you tag me and stuff because I absolutely adore it and it puts a smile on my face even if y'all tag me in one of those tag three friends to do this challenge thing I might not have the time and time to do it because I have a very hectic schedule um I barely I don't post anything on Instagram really anymore because my school life is insane right now and super busy um but anytime anybody tags me in anything I, it puts a huge smile on my face and whenever anyone messages me on Instagram like messages me on Instagram for anything at all like it makes me so happy and like it's honestly like a, a joy a joy to have i was just trying to say how um i don't think that i want to be hosting readathons anymore maybe in the future just because it was everything coming in at once and having all the messages coming at once that really just like did not make me feel comfortable if that makes sense and i did not want to go on social media and instagram is the only social media that i have now i deleted literally everything else and i did not want to go on there because i don't know i just i didn't want everything on at once i love y'all tagging me and stuff don't get me wrong i love that but i everything coming in at once i literally had 30 something 30 something messages which i i cannot do <laughs> i cannot do my brain is just like nope not gonna not gonna not gonna engage not gonna do it like my brain just does not want to do it sorry so if you tagged me in something and i did not respond i am incredibly sorry my anxiety got the best of me um nothing against you whatsoever my anxiety got the best of me darn anxiety <laughs> also i'm not gonna say sorry for my long-winded uh, mental health update and talking about it because i feel like i shouldn't need to apologize because um this is my channel and i feel open enough to talk about it and i feel like it should be talked about more and people talking about this kind of stuff um but anyway this video is quite long i didn't expect for it to be quite long 
um so i'll leave it at that um thank you so much jen for asking me to be a part of this you are so incredibly sweet i love you very very much and i love all the other hosts a part of this and yeah i hope everyone else had a great kindle clear out i know i did so thank you all so, so much for watching i will see you all soon in my next one bye y'all Thank you.